family. Fake news has become increasingly, maddeningly, disturbingly popular, especially on Facebook. I'm talking here about websites that deliberately post phony stuff or hyper-partisan sites that run many distorted stories. Now, a BuzzFeed study found the most the 20 most popular bogus election stories from fake or hyper-partisan sites drew more comments and more engagement than the 20 most popular stories from legitimate newspapers, networks, and websites. Not that I'm agreeing with everything they do. Hundreds of thousands of people clicked on such phony junk as Pope Francis endorsed Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton sold weapons to ISIS. One such bozo bragged to the Washington Post that he helped influence the election, which is ludicrous. But look, this is a cancer on the news business. Even President Obama got into the act at a news conference in Berlin. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not, uh, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones, uh, if we can't discriminate between serious arguments and propaganda, then we have problems. Mark Zuckerberg said this week the social network would crack down by kicking fake sites off its advertising network. Google is promising a similar purge. But here's the problem. Zuckerberg has already admitted that its trending topics discriminated against conservative stories and fired the staff. But can he hire people objective enough not to lean one way or another, especially when stories are either partially fake or partially distorted for partisan reasons? Zuckerberg denies it, but he now runs a media company, a very powerful media company. And that means he needs to impose some minimal standards, even affecting the too-good-to-check material that your crazy uncle wants to share. Coming up, my conversation with Megyn Kelly about her long battle and eventual truce with the next president and whether she still has the scars.